Howdy. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the boundary conditions that govern our thin airfoil theory. So again, we're going to be looking at some airfoil that we're approximating as a vortex sheet along the camber line. And the inflow condition for our vortex sheet is going to be some V infinity, which has some angle of attack alpha uh, compared to the chord line. Now, the boundary conditions that we want to apply are that our velocity is equal to simply our inflow far away from the airfoil. We're, we're saying this is at infinity. Likewise, on the surface of our airfoil, we want to say that v dot n, which is to say that the flow through this surface is equal to zero. And this is on the surface. However, since we're making this assumption that the thickness is much less than the chord, we can say that instead of on the surface, we want this to be on the camber line. So what does this mean? Well, let's start looking at the contributions of different things towards this normal component on the camber line. So we're no longer using this normal. Instead, we're going to be using a normal on the camber line in order to determine this. So this camber line is defined by some slope, dz by dx. And again, we have some normal direction, and we have some tangential direction. If we have some inflow, this v infinity, which has some angle of attack, then we can define an effective angle of attack, which is to say the difference between our alpha and this slope, which we're going to call theta, alpha minus theta. So our theta can be simply defined as the arc tangent of our slope, dz by dx. However, since we're using this approximation that our thickness is much less than our camber line, we can ignore the entire arctangent part and just say that theta is equal to dz by dx. So we're instead going to say that the alpha effective is equal to alpha minus dz by dx. So we're trying to set or find the influence of our velocity in the normal direction. And this is simply going to be equal to our v infinity, the magnitude of our inflow velocity, times the sine of alpha minus theta. But again, our thickness is much less than our chord. And one of the approximations there is that our angle of attack is small. So if both of these are small, we can ignore this sign and simply say that this is equal to v infinity times the other thing that has an effect on this normal component is going to be the vortex sheet itself. So let's look at the effect of one portion of this vortex sheet on the upwash at some other point of this sheet. So remember that each part of this is going to have some differential circulation, which is equal to gamma times this differential length. And gamma, again, is the local strength of this vortex sheet. And we will say that this is some distance x, and this is some distance c. So the contribution of the upwash of this vortex core is going to be negative gamma d c over 2 pi, and we need the distance. This is going to be x minus c. So this means that the sum of all of these components is going to be the total upwash as a function of x, and that's going to be the negative integral from 0 to c of gamma d c over 2 pi x minus c. 
So now we need to enforce this condition based on all of these components. So we want to set the sum of our inflow effect on this and our upwash due to the circulation of the plate equal to zero. Now, summing all this up, this becomes a V infinity alpha minus dz by dx is equal to 1 over 2 pi. We're simply moving this to the other side and getting rid of this negative. Integral from 0 to c, gamma d xi over 2 pi x minus xi. And this equation that we've just written out is going to be the thin airfoil equation that governs the rest that we do in this